does look like we are going to get that lift possibly up to that 618 at 45,000. Jerome Powell, good old pal, is going to leave interest rates the same. So you want to be looking at uh, some of the community banks uh, stocks for uh, potential, what I would call uh, potential shorts. <laughs> And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's early, and market is on the rebound, just circling up on what we discussed this past week. I'm going to get this fib out of the way here. And basically what we did say is, look, if uh, Bitcoin can reclaim the range at 41,000, make a higher low, which on a candle body base, on a candle basis, this would in fact be a higher low. And then we would target the top side of the range coming in at about 45,000 or call it 44.5, whatever, uh, close, close enough. I'd probably use that as the pivot at 44.786. If you're still looking for a little bit of upside in this move, now let's line it up with the fibs here. So you can see the uh, 0.5 got rejected on the first pass, came back to the 382, bounced it off there. And it does look like we are going to get that lift possibly up to that 618 at 45,000. But to be safe, call it 44,751. And really, as long as we were living below here on the daily time frame, below that 60, <laughs> that 618, or if you're a little more aggressive, you call it 46,000, can start aggressive. You get long, you get long and strong above 45,000. You're a little more conservative. You wait for 46,000. Now the rate cut announcement was just made and Jerome Powell, good old pal is going to leave interest rates the same. And uh, what really matters apparently is the talk here at about two o'clock or in 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, Jerome Powell is going to give a talk and if he loses the word explicit tightening. What they're talking about is uh, the Fed has been rolling off of their balance sheet, um, mortgage-backed securities and bonds. And, uh, you know, any questions surrounding quantitative tightening, if essentially he starts to talk about potentially loosening or, uh, you know, rate cuts early as March, that would be very, very for the market. Also to note the BF, BP, B, BPTF program is going to run out here in March. And that is the bank term funding program. Essentially, it was a bailout with taxpayer money to uh, bail out those banks that failed earlier this year because of the interest rate hikes and all their bad bonds and toxic debt. That program is going to start to roll off uh, coming up in March. So you want to be looking at uh, some of the community banks uh, stocks for uh, what I would call uh, potential shorts. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but rumor has it on the street. New York Community Bank Corp is uh, in some trouble. Their stock taking a leg down today. I think uh, some other bank stocks are down as well. And yeah, New York Community Bank stock sink uh, after they cut their dividends. Just thought I'd bring that to our attention as some of that uh, worries in the potential uh, and the reasons to own Bitcoin in the first place. So um, what else do I want to line up this target? You know, call it 45,000. Even might get front run with uh, some selling pressure at that pivot. But overall, definitely going to, you know, hold that bearish bias as we discussed as long as the five day is below this pivot more specifically five day below 45,000 most likely going to in the next five day closure comes up in four days and five hours so we still have momentum to the downside and extremely low volatility now what would uh, flip me bullish well a closure above 47,000 on the five day and volatility begins to expand well I think we probably going to you know Reapproach the highs at that point, and we're talking about sixty-five thousand there. Yep. So this this will be known as a classic bull trap if we do get rejected at the six one eight. I'm just bringing it all the way back. Very similarly, we did get a rejection at the six one eight on the weekly time frame right there. So a uh, quick rejection, and now just consolidating. So the next. The question is, you know, 45,000 or not, 
45,000 uh, or and higher low or not is specifically that's what you want to see on the daily time frame something like this where we come up above that 618 create a higher low and that's probably the next target coming in at uh, 54,874 which is that 786 fib so uh, that's the thoughts on Bitcoin now uh, where would you confirm uh, this you know, more downside action. Well, it would be something like this, a uh, rejection here. Let's see, this is not going to be. All right, I'm going to redraw it here because you got to plan for both sides, essentially, right? So um, could we do this? Could we bounce up a little bit more, reject, lower high? And essentially, that would be the, the trend is the lower high. You have your lower low, lower high, and then we would be looking for the next lower low. And essentially, that would be the uh, confirmed daily trend reversal. So nothing confirmed yet. And we do have a monthly closure coming in uh, this month as well. So a um, bit of an indecision candle there. Um, Going to be closing here in the next four hours and 45 minutes. So why not look at the four hour time frame, putting in a nice green and we got 15 minutes to the Powell meeting, so I'll be watching that here. I guess we could follow up on what else did we talk about? ETH Bitcoin, ETH BTC, and the case for Ethereum outperforming, outperforming. So we did come down to the box of peace and prosperity and attempted to make a higher low. However, if we reject here and close anywhere back below the 786 i would goose the odds uh in the favor of bitcoin outperforming ethereum at least over the next few weeks does that mean bitcoin goes up no it just means it doesn't go down as much as ethereum goes down so very important pivot for ethereum right there now the ethereum us dollar pair is doing quite good right now so yeah that's the line in the sand here um, definitely you know could consolidate here for a little bit before you know making an attempt to move higher let's see what the stochastic will cross up from one of the lowest levels we've seen in some time you'll have some hidden bullish divergence on the stochastic or on the jewel there if this does confirm and how would you confirm it well a daily back above not point not five six one six that will Definitely goose the odds in the favor of altcoins. The other thing I want to bring up here is total. The total, total, this is all the cryptos excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. And essentially just uh, trudging the road of happy destiny right here. Well, lower low, lower high. So any kind of a closure back below here at 745, probably going to get back down to the range lows right here at 687. And you'd probably see our altcoins uh, not perform too well. Um, but generally, just looking for this to consolidate and then probably move higher. And any kind of a breakout of the range here on the daily time frame would probably be good enough for me at 808, 808 billion, trillion. I don't know, but it's 808 right there, that level um let's see let's bitcoin dominance right now see i don't have all my favorite i have to go to my trading list here there i got everything i want bitcoin dominance taking a leg up and um remember our base case was for bitcoin dominance to head up to this region but right now we're getting lower highs and lower lows on the daily time frame so where does that next lower high usually come in? Right around that 618. So coming in at about 53% back above there. Well, you could start to start to the odds in the favor of the Bitcoin bulls. Let's see, what else do we have to discuss? ETH dominance looks like the ETH Bitcoin chart. Again, nothing too impressive here unless we can hold this low. Bitcoin dominance, tether dominance, still hanging out here on the 236. Had a weak bounce, and we do want to see this to start to curl over for our altcoins and Bitcoin to continue the party to the upside. But what else did I want to bring up today on Bitcoin is uh, the good old Gaussian channel, which we spoke about some time ago. We were following this guy. Oh, taking that off. I'm going to take these off. I just turned $140 into $1,300 over the last two weeks. 
Yes, it's possible in the land of cryptocurrency. My name is Chris Mitchell. I am the CEO of Crypt Courses, and I'm bringing you this video because I'm gonna give you some really good information on how to buy, sell, and trade digital currency. Now, you've probably heard about a lot of people making a lot of money in crypto but you don't feel safe or intelligent enough to make the investment. That's why I created Bitcoin 101, how to stack sats using technical analysis. It's the crypto trader's dream to starting your crypto journey. It's absolutely free. All you gotta do is click on the link in the description below and we will get you your free guide today. Make it a little more simpler and notice the top side of the Gaussian channel is coming in right around that 618 at 45,000. Typically the way this works, if you break below it, touching the bottom side of the Gaussian channel, right? Break below the or above the mean band, you're going to revisit the top side of the channel, which is coming around that 4478, call it 44,700 number we talked about earlier, right at the top side of the range. So that would be a perfect area to put in a bit of a trap. Um, and looks like Bitcoin spilling it out on the lower term time frames right now as we speak. Uh, Powell's not on yet. You remember Powell? He does the dance before he gets on because he's going to pump the market. He's going to load everybody's bags up. You know, all those politicians that are paying him all that money, right? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just here. But essentially, this is a big, uh, you know, next couple of days in determining on where the market goes. Um, one other chart I wanted to bring up here from Rect Capital, uh, also outlining a similar um, stance that we are 31% into the bull market, marking off the halvings, right? A year before the halving, we the major down sloping trend. We come back and retest the 236. Um, what else do we got going on here? What else do we got going on here? Another tweet. Do I want to bring this one up? Nope. I think that's it. I will also bring up the fear and greed index and, uh, take a look at the open interest. So people are now in the greedy zone and, uh, that's typically what you want to see for a bit of a pullback. Um, we're still not way up there yet. So remember the bottoms happen around 10 and uh, you know, your tops are going to be up there around 80 or 75 above 70. So that's just something to note there. I will. Yeah. And it, of course a break above the Gaussian channel at the top side, we, we know what that typically leads to and uh, has led in past prior bull markets. Well, huge rallies. Uh, we identified this one way back here. And gosh, notice these trend lines are holding out pretty good, holding out uh, fairly nicely. If we start to lose the bottom side of the Gaussian channel, well, I think our chances of revisiting the uh, last breakout area around 31.5, or at least this trend line, are, are going to be uh, definitely goosed. Goosed in favor of the bears. Okay, um, I think I'm going to wrap it up with that. I'm also going to take a look at Solana as... The Jupiter airdrop did go down today and uh, rumor on the street was essentially that um, don't buy it now, sell it short if you can. Uh, why? Because they value valuing Jupiter at $20 billion, which uh, sounds like a lot to me for a new project. Okay. And what do people usually do with their airdrop coins? They usually dump them. They take those profits and run and buy some other projects, which we'll discuss some of the Solana ecosystem projects as they're probably going to get some love because of the airdrop. And um, this is the, uh, that's just straight Solana. Seeing we did break above the Gaussian channel there. If we can hold above there and just make a higher low, well, we could revisit the highs. Definitely. I'd say on the daily time frame, this is going to be our new pivot for the day right here. So daily closure above here, good. Below here, uh, bad. And uh, below the mean band or the Gaussian channel, we probably revisit the $87,000, $87 mark. Um, 
that Solana. And then I wanted to look at Sol Bitcoin and Sol Tau. Where did it go? Sol ETH. So this is comparing Solana's performance against Ethereum. Uh, to be fair, right? We're just making higher highs and higher lows right now. Um, have not confirmed this as a lower high yet. We need to close back below this pivot at 0 0.04230. And again, uh, probably some pressure down from there. And this pivot right here, if we can just close above the middle wick here, I would be looking for this one to run to the highs as this does look like a bit of a W formation, not the best one um, as we didn't get a whole lot of volume on this candle. So don't know how much I trust that one, but uh, wanted to bring that up just in case you guys were looking. And then um, again, pointing out the ETH Bitcoin chart here. We really want to close back above that mean band. Losing the mean band, not going to be good. But more importantly, this pivot here, um, shout out to my good friend, Scotty and Zach. Scott and Zach asking me a lot of questions about Ethereum. Should Is Ethereum going to outperform Bitcoin? Well, this is your indicator ETH Satoshi pairing. If we start to close below these wicks here, very likely Bitcoin outperforms uh, Ethereum. And if we can confirm this as a higher low, you know, really you want to close back above here, but, uh, you know, aggressive people wait just a closure above yesterday's high. And um, we'd confirm this as a low and be looking for a shot, you know, potentially back up to this level. And ETH is... Um, as we said, uh, probably got a little bit more left in the tank. If it is going to pop, you know, selling pressure right up there at 2472. As long as we are below this pivot, it is pressure on to the downside for Ethereum. And that's it for me today, guys. Hope you have a blessed and highly favored rest of your day. I'll be back tomorrow with another one. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.